This one's a big one. Spurs coming to Old Trafford on Wednesday night. Flying high right now under Antonio Conte. The last time they came to Old Trafford, Ronaldo scored a hat-trick. It was a 3-2 win last season. I don't think that's going to be happening this time around. It's a big, big game. We need this uh, to bury the game against Newcastle. It was frustrating. There was a lot of dominance, yes, but a real lack of precision in attack. How does Eric Ten Hag change that? What I'm going to do is run through all the team news that we know in the build-up. Obviously, Eric Ten Hag's got his press conference this afternoon where he's going to confirm the fitness of Anthony Martial and Christian Eriksen. So I'm going to take a look at the teams. I'm going to take a look at what we could do with and without them. It's going to be a good one. Make sure you drop a like on the video, please. I hope you enjoy these videos. I enjoyed doing them. But the early team news for Manchester United is that Scott McTominay is going to be back and available. That's the, that's the only guarantee that we know because he was banned for the game against Newcastle. He's back and he's fit. And I tell you what, if Ericsson isn't in the team, I very much think we could be seeing Scott McTominay come in. And I'm going to explain and describe all the options that we've got because... I think our defence is pretty set, but there's a lot of questions to be asked about midfield and attack. So, may, as I said, make sure you please drop a like on the video. So many of you watch and so few of you like it. I don't really understand why. Maybe you just don't like it. But look, let's run into this. And let's run into it. Let's run through it. Probably better than running into it. This was the team that started against Newcastle at the weekend. Now, there were definitely some issues. I don't really need to tell you where the issues were, but I'm going to anyway. That just did not work. Ronaldo was invisible. Sancho did not do anywhere near enough on that right on that left wing. Anthony was predictable on the right wing. I don't really think there was any attacking player who wasn't at fault in their own way during that game. But one thing I don't think that will change is that back five. I think we'll stick with this back five against Spurs. And I think we should be sticking with this back five against Spurs. I think it's the best back five we've got at this moment in time, right? Don't really know why I did a line there. That was the wrong thing to do. Somebody who I think needs to have a stormer of a game. My main man himself, Lissandro Martinez. Harry Kane, I think he's got five in five now. Harry Kane, we, we all thought that the Lissandro Martinez against Erling Haaland duel would be a, a really fascinating one. But hardly, there was hardly any sort of duel that happened between them. I think in this game in particular. Now, Kudelewski might be out. Richarlison is out. But we need this defence. I'll tell you what, our defence, like, even against Newcastle, the defence held up pretty damn well. Didn't concede too many clear-cut opportunities apart from that uh, set piece and, and the, the header against the bar on the post from Joe Linton. We were lucky there. We need our defence staying strong. I think look, currently Luke Shaw has played himself right back into that team. And I think he starts... I think Diogo Delo. I actually think he's one yellow away from being suspended for the Chelsea game. That's a bit of a risk. And no, he's going to have a tough game up against Hyun Min Song. They might try and expose that down there uh, for maybe a little bit of a lack of pace compared to what we've got on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side, sorry, with Martinez and Shaw. But I would stick with that back five completely. I think all the questions are around these six positions here. Had to do the math in my head there quickly. And of course... It pretty much revolves around this man. Please be fit to face Spurs, Christian Eriksen. Please, please, please be fit. I mean, the change there, I mean, I don't need to tell you what the change would be. Absolutely, it's that because against, is that the right one? That's not the right one. That's not the right one either. Damn it, Sam. Use your pictures properly. Fred, absolutely trash against Newcastle. He really, really was. He cannot and will not ever be able to replace the forward-thinking, passing, vertical line, breaking passes that this man brings to the team. Now, as far as we know at the moment, he was not visible in training on Monday and he has until tomorrow to regain his fitness. But we need Ericsson back into this team, man. I don't really need to tell you what he brings, but I'm going to anyway. He is the linchpin. He is the man that makes all the difference. He's the man that will find those passes there. Those passes there. Instead of simply passing it sideways. Passing it sideways off the pitch. He's not going to do that one. But you know what I mean. That's just not, simply put, that's not part of Fred's game. Ericsson is the man who's going to drive this forward. Maybe the man is going to find those balls in behind so we can see some more runs on the outside from Anthony and Sancho. Just in every single way, shape and form. United at the moment are heavily reliant on Christian Eriksen being the link. 
we need him fit. But if he's not fit, I don't think we should be seeing Fred again. I think we should be seeing this. If Christian Eriksen is not available, I imagine we see this. I imagine we see McTominay dropping as the deeper of the two midfielders. And then Casemiro is actually tasked with finding those balls. With bringing it forward. Breaking the lines. Being that man to do those sorts of passes. And I think Casemiro is far more capable of that than Fred is. Than Scott McTominay is. And I think as a duo, it would probably blend itself. Now, I mean, there was so much said about the, the partnership of Fred and Casemiro at Manchester United. But judging by that game against Newcastle, it just doesn't have enough creative forward spark. And against Spurs, especially if Spurs go 1-0 down. We're going to find it tough to break Spurs down anyway. We go 1-0 down and they can really sit disciplined. It's going to be really hard. I hope to God we get this guy starting. But if we don't get him starting, I think we'll see McTominay and Casemiro. So for all intents and purposes, I'm expecting Ericsson to miss the game. If Ericsson starts, then it switches completely. In fact, sod it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go best case scenario. Best case scenario, that's our midfield. Worst, uh, worst case scenario, Ericsson's missing. I think McTominay plays deeper and Casemiro in front of him. Now, I think there's been a lot of fair criticism about Bruno Fernandes. Oh, that's the wrong line. Ara about Bruno Fernandes at this moment in time. Let me give you a lovely little circle there. And I think it's fair. Bruno Fernandes, the thing that I find strange, right? When we're missing, when we're missing this bloke, right? When Ericsson's not there, we need Bruno Fernandes to be the man who comes in and replaces a bit more of that creative forward spark. And he's not doing that. Bruno's got to take that responsibility on. He has to. He has to link that defence more. Eriksen's supposed to be the player, right, who, lit, who bridges the gap between defence and the attack. Bruno is supposed to be the player who bridges the midfields to the attack. Bruno, on paper, is supposed to be the player who finds out... Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Yeah, he's still getting used to this. Turn that off. Give me an arrow. He's supposed to be the player that finds those balls there as the number 10. Finds those cute little passes that can just go past a striker that he can run onto. And then Ericsson is supposed to be the player who from deeper can find those balls. Maybe feed it into Bruno. Maybe switch it to Sancho. Maybe bring a fullback into play. They have to work in unison. At this moment in time, Bruno is not pulling his weight. That has to change. But I think Bruno keeps his place in this starting 11. I really, really do. Now, the real questions, I think. Actually, no, it's not real. It's just real questions about the midfield and the attack. And more specifically, this man. Now, I've tried to placate a lot of Ronaldo fans over the last couple of months. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm nailing my colours to the mast in the fact that Ronaldo should not be starting games for Manchester United in the Premier League. Now, I know that Rashford, in terms of finishing right now, is no better than Ronaldo. Ronaldo does not offer the movement and the dynamism we need inside this system. I think Ten Hag should be prioritising movement. If there's one thing, that, if the finishing's not there, we need the movement there. Now, Rashford has to improve in that sense as well. But in my opinion, Ronaldo should not be starting this game. Ronaldo should be, if, if Ronaldo's going to come on and change the game, change the game, dude. I want for the last 30 minutes. I don't want to see Ronaldo start in this game. I don't want to see Ronaldo start. Look, in an ideal world, right, this man's fit. And if, if, if this man's fit, okay, we're going best case scenario on this one. Cool. Well, that changes everything because Martial comes straight into this starting 11. He is our first choice number nine. Two goals from the bench against City. Obviously, they were a little bit different towards the end of the game assist against Everton if we had to go off injured. We don't know whether Martial or Eriksen is going to be fit, but if they're both fit, they're both in that starting 11 and they're both crucial for Manchester United. Now, as much as you've got a question about our number nines, you've got questions about both of our wingers at the moment. Anthony and Sancho, both of them had a massive air of predictability against Newcastle. What happened was effectively they were doubled up on. They got into this position there. They went, they, they got there, they got squared up. And instead of going on the overlap, they just turned around, passed it backwards, passed it inside to Bruno. They just did that. They never really at any point took their man on and got themselves into that position. 
Anthony never went on the outside and got into that position. Because if you do that, then you can find that cutback. You can find that cutback there. That's what United need to do more of. It's what we're doing so good in the preseason. Been poor from them in terms of the overlap, in terms of the predictability to their game. But again, I think Anthony and Sancho will keep their spots in this starting eleven. Now, Sancho for Rashford could be a change that happens, right? I absolutely know that. I think Anthony will keep his spot. I think Eric Ten Hag will stay loyal to Anthony, and I think Anthony will deliver. Now, remember, by the way, that Anthony's got a goal against Arsenal in his debut, then a goal away at City, then a goal away at Everton. Newcastle was his first blank in the Premier League. But he does, uh, as far as Spurs know, Antonio Conte can go into this game and say, right, okay, lads, as long as we just double up on Anthony, he won't ever go on the outside. So we can just nullify that threat. Anthony can't allow defenders, a, a defence to do that to him. It was, it's too easy. And Sancho, the same thing. Sancho took players on for fun in the Bundesliga. Now we're going to need overlapping runs from Luke Shaw to really help facilitate that, create the space. But that's where the overloads come in. The 3-1-6 system works in possession. That We need that or Spurs will just defend in numbers and they'll hit on the counter-attack and they'll probably score because they've got lethal players going forward. But this really is a fascinating game for me. It's a massive game. That will be, in my opinion, the ideal starting eleven for Manchester United. If it's not ideal and we do have Eriksen and Martial missing, I imagine we'll see this. I imagine we'll see Casemiro play just in front of McTominay with Casemiro being tasked with bringing the ball forward a little bit. And if Martial's not fit, I think Rashford starts through the middle and I think Ronaldo comes on as a sub. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Some of you will disagree and agree with me about the Ronaldo situation. As I said, I'm nailing my colours to the mask now. Ronaldo shouldn't be starting for us anymore in the Premier League. I've seen too much evidence now. I know I'm right. I don't say that in like an like egotistical way, but just saying what I'm seeing in front of me. I'm not blinded by any sort of emotion, sentiment or, or agenda. I want what's best for United. And I think the movement against Spurs is going to be important. But saying that, he did get a hat-trick last year. It's such a confusing... You let me know what you think in the comments below. I've talked, to, I've talked about this enough. It's a big game though, isn't it? It really is. And we need three points.